The RSPB is the biggest bird charity in the world. Is it the best? We say no. There are a few things we'd like to ask the charity after looking at its annual report. Why furlough half your staff when you're flush with cash? This year, the, it says the resources available for charitable activities increased by 5.2 million to 115.7, which I think is 4.5% increase, but charitable expenditure fell by 6.1%. That's effectively broken up a 10%. In, you know, they've, they've effectively got 10% more cash. How much money they've taken from the government for the furlough scheme, and given the very large amount of money that they, they're sitting on, like the 20 million in cash, and they, they've got free reserves on top of that, but 47.9 million or 25 weeks of costs, whereas the trustees' agreed level is only eight to 16 weeks. The total financial unrestricted funds are about 227 million, which by my calculation is about 118 weeks, or almost two years of reserves. The RSPB has come under fire for profiting from development of land in Tinbridge, Devon, which it says is home to 80% of the UK's diminishing still bunting population. The charity appears to have bought nearby Ash Hill to offset housing projects, including those by its business supporter Barrett Development. Don't some of these corporate links seem a bit dodgy? So basically, they borrowed 500 grand, they say in, in the report, from Lloyd's to buy Ash Hill in Devon, which is 37 hectares. So under these Section 106 payments, developers have paid over 650 grand by the Section 106 levy. Now, you'd imagine, given that Barrett is one of the developers in Teambridge, that they're one, that they're one of the people who paid in this money. And what that allows the RSPB to do is they borrow the money from Lloyd's, buy the land, and the loan is paid off over the five-year period because the money comes from Cambridge Council and it comes from those Section 106 payments. It also seems weird to me that, that they say that this serious soil bumping, whatever it is, is the iconic bird of Devon. 80% of the whole UK population's there, 33% in Teambridge, which basically means that they're allowing, have allowed the developers to screw up at least 14.8 um, hectares of habitat of this soil bunting. Transparency, setting conservation goals, protecting wildlife. These are all the things you'd expect a wildlife charity to be doing. So are we getting value for money? If you're running a huge cash hungry NGO, that's what you've got to be good at. You know, they, they're entitled to do what they do, need to do to survive and to prosper. What they're not entitled to do, I think, is to is to not give value for money. But the, the problem there is not RSPB, it's the people that give them the money in the first place. So if, if you ask, um, as I did, um, the Welsh Government, how they check value for money, they say it's at the application stage. Now that's like saying, when did you work out, you know, if you're buying a car, you you, you pay for it when you buy it, that's all right. But if it goes wrong afterwards, it means, you know, it's in warranty, for God's sake, you can take it back. There's no warranty for this, nobody checks anything. Some of the reserves they're looking at, they'll be specialising in the seabirds. Not everybody wants to own a cliff. They're quite happy to do that. And they will probably have a million guillemots or a million uh, seabirds on that cliff. So that's a great number. But then when you look at some of the other reserves, there might be some birds like the capercaillie that instead of thriving and coming forward are going backwards and are in decline. It's something that we really need to have is a wildlife audit on the reserves and then we could possibly have a wildlife audit on land not managed by the RSPB and see it as a comparison. Like Vernery for example, they've been in charge of that for like 40 years. Now for the biggest grouse moor in Wales to have been managed by the largest uh, bird protection society in the world for 40 years and to have and to be told that if you don't give us 6 million well 3.3 million in the short term more in the long term red grouse are going to be extinct is a is a pretty considerable indictment a lot of the money is not just from its members it's coming from the subsidies it's coming from grants it's coming from companies that will happily support them some of them companies that are linked with them are it's sort of have a, a dubious relationship why would some of these companies support such a thing? Is it a way of washing cash? Antis often target traps on estates, tampering with them and calling gamekeepers who set them murderers. 
but the RSPB rarely comes under fire for its predator control, specifically killing stoats on Orkney to protect ground nesting birds. Why choose the RSPB, not gamekeepers, to control predators? Go back to Orkney. It's gone from having lots of curlew and lots of um, wind chats and lots of red grouse and quite a lot of black, black grouse and quite a lot of hen harriers and quite a lot of merlin to them saying in the application to HLF for £3.3 million, pounds, if they don't get that money, then those birds will either become um, extinct locally soon or within a decade. Why did they allow RSPB and its fellow travellers to, to lead on something that they had absolutely no expertise in? And probably I can't find a record of them killing a stoat, any stoats, anywhere, before they start, before they applied for the grant. Well, the likeliest reason comes back to wild justice and, and revive and Chris Packham and everything. If they'd done that, there would have been hell to pay. There would have been, you know, death threats and, and all sorts of stuff flying about. They've, yeah, the, the RSPB does carry out predator control. In fact, one of its uh, projects is to eradicate the stoat on one of the Scottish islands and it's been given a grant of six million pounds and an enormous amount of money to eradicate a species. Now, if the gamekeeper said, we're going to go and eradicate the species, there'd be an uproar. Now, I don't know what you could do with six million pounds for conservation, but they could have, they could have eradicated the stouts on Orkney for a few hundred thousand pounds 10 years ago. They're now going to get six, essentially six million pounds, and they may or may not succeed. Now, that's not my fault or your fault. It's the fault of the people that sat there and watched it. Now, in those years, as far as I can tell, reading the RSPB bag returns, they killed one stoat on Orkney. Last year, when they got EU money, for the last account, they killed over 100. So they can clearly catch stoats. But they didn't want to spend their own money doing it. RSPB's new CEO, Becky Spate, has been very vocal about her anti-grouse shooting and anti-farming ideas. One thing she wants is RSPB announcing targets, which it rarely does. Why doesn't RSPB set campaign targets? You've got this strange combination. This, this, um, with, with an awful lot of grants that go to the conservation industry, it's about process, not outcome. And what it should be is about outcome. The reason why gamekeepers are efficient is they have to produce an outcome. But at the bird end of the sausage machine, there's nothing. There's not, we'll get 10 pairs. And yet it's an organisation that says it wants, I think Becky said that on that meet, on the telly, we want targets, we want targets. There's no targets in the application. If I'd have been sitting on the HLF board, I would have said, I want, how many Merlin have you got? One pair, right, I want four pairs. How many curly have you got? Well, actually none. But, you know, there's some roundabout. All right, how many did you have 20 years ago? 100 pairs. Right, I want 100 pairs. You'd get some, this, you'd get some birds, for goodness sake, for the money. Some of the conservation organisations is all about the apex predator up here. Below that is a pyramid for the environment that it needs to live in. If you think of David Bellamy, he was always on the ground making sure that the plant life, because he was a biologist, was his main... Um, focus of attention, the insects, and then everything above that to the apex predator to be able to survive. The RSPB's persecution of gamekeepers, who it regularly accuses of killing birds of prey without providing evidence, is bordering on obsession and selective conservation. Why don't you work with the shooting community instead of condemning it? Why not look at the benefits that the gamekeepers do? They do an awful lot of positive work for the local communities, for fundraising, and for the environment and what we're doing. Why would you rather fight than talk? What, what is the matter with the people who own and farm the land and who, who run shoots and have grouse moors and stuff? I understand you think that a small percentage of them, or even a larger percentage of them, occasionally break the law, but then you can guarantee that if you've got 1.2 million members, you've got several, you've probably got a few murders in the membership. You know, the fact that your member, the, the people break the law doesn't, doesn't invalidate the community. 
The RSPB is holding its AGM online this Saturday, the 10th of October. If you're a member, you can watch it on rspb.org.uk and maybe ask some of those questions.